In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this beautiful outline logo in PowerPoint all the way from scratch and using only PowerPoint tools. So it looks like a really professionally designed logo, but it can also be used in different ways. Let's, for example, say you want to use the logo as a minimal side element on your slide. You can, for example, put it in the corner of your slide. And of course, the logo can be used. We use the word energy in here, but you can customize it to your own word. Now, if you like this minimal style of presentation, I also make entire slide decks that you can download on my Patreon. I'll link it down in the description below. Let's start from a blank slide. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the background color. Let's choose something dark so that we can easily work with the text here. We're going to add a text box in the middle of the slide. And let's type in the word energy. Let's increase it in size. Let's put it 150, maybe 100 is enough. Center and make it white. So what we want to do for this technique is we want to look for a very bold font. And in this case, I'm going to go for a font called Prolamina. This font, you'll have to download it separately, so I'll link it in the description below. You can choose any font that you like in theory, but the best thing is that you choose a very bold font. So this one could work as well, Avenir Next, any bold fonts could work. But since we want to make the outlines, it's preferred to have fonts with straight corners, so we don't have too many curves that we have to trace. So ideally, you'd go for a font with a lot less curves. So Bebas Neue would also be a very good font, especially the bold one. This has a few curves, but you can ignore them and you can kind of make straight angles from it. So I'm going for this Pro Lamina font, and I'll share the link to that font in the description below. Let's make it just a bit bigger and then place it in the middle of the slide. Now we want to right click and lock this item so that we don't accidentally select the font in the background. Next, we're going to select shapes and we're going for the free form shape. Now we want to start just a little bit ahead of the text, but start at the baseline. So click here, hold the shift key, click once more, and you see that a line is now selecting. And now we're just going to trace the letters it doesn't have to be exact. For the non-straight curves, we can release the shift key or hold it if it's 45 degrees. So you can see you don't have to do it exactly right, but just about right is good enough. As soon as we come to the bottom of the first letter, we don't want to connect it to the front again. We want to connect it to the right, to the second letter. And then just keep tracing and every corner you click and put a hold. Here we can see that the N has an internal opening. We're going to ignore that for now and we'll come back to that later. So you just skip to the E and here you do the same thing for the E. Select all the corners and then the three parts of the E. Ideally, you do it somewhat in the same line as the other E in this letter so that everything looks nice and consistent. For the R, you can do the same. So this way you see why we kind of use the straight corners in the letters, they're much easier to trace. Same thing for the R, we're going to ignore the internal side. We'll come back to that in a second as well. Now G, this is quite an extensive letter, so we're going to try to trace it as nice as possible. And for me in this font, the like last angle of the G, I'm going to make it a little less close to the edges. I'm going to give it a little bit more breathing room. I think that will look nicer in the end design. And also here at the bottom, it goes straight to the bottom. I want to give that same angle here so that we're consistent with our letters. And for the Y, I'm doing the same. So I'm just holding shift key here and you can paste it up once you get used to the clicking. So once more and the Y we can almost trace entirely. Now we're at the end and we want to give some extra line to the right, click, and then we have our final selection here and you can just press the escape key to end it. Now it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to change the outline to yellow. This is something which we can easily see now. So this already gives us quite a close feel of the energy look that we want to get. Now there's a few more things we need to add. So I'm going to add a shape and in this case, a rectangle, and I'm going to place it in the center of the end. I'm going to do no fill and give it the same yellow outline. So this way you can see that the N kind of is more clear now. We're going to copy that to the right side, reduce the height, 
and then copy it also to the top. And here you can, you can choose. You can leave it like this, or if you want to expand it just a little bit more, you can do that as well. So expand it. It depends on the style that you want to go for. I'm going to keep it everything the same. This looks quite good in my opinion. Now I'm going to create a duplicate of the slide. That way I keep one as a working file if I ever need to go back. And this one I can delete the text for now. Select everything and place it in the middle. We can also make it white. So I'm going for outline and make the outline white. Now we go to the insert tab, icons. And here I'm going to look for two specific items. One is a leaf because we want to represent the green energy. Select that leaf, put it here. Let's make it white as well. And the other one, we want a plug. So like an electrical cable plug, this one here will do just fine. As you can see from both of these, this one has, has both sides of the plug and we don't want that. We just need the top left part. We're going to convert it to shape and that will split it up into different parts so that you can remove the bottom part and then you can turn the connection part. And this one we can already put in place here at the bottom left or at the beginning of the word and the leaf we're going to put at the end. You can see this is not a very natural curve that we have created so we can do something with that. We're going to arrange, rotate and flip horizontally. And this way we have created the or we flip the leaf so that the connection is just a little bit better. You can rotate it as much as you want and then connect it to the sides. If you want to shift with small increments, you can use the arrow keys to go to the left, to the right or up and down if you want. So that way you can position it nicely to the beginning or the end of your word. We're going to do the same with the beginning part and we're going to reduce that just a little bit. Let's hold control and zoom in. I'm going to close this for now until it's about the same width and then you can just connect them together. And this already gives you quite a nice look uh, that we want to create. Now, if this is too thin for you, there's another thing that you could do. So select the squares as well as the energy text here and format object. Now here you can increase or decrease the width of your design. So if you select the outlines of those blocks, you can put it to four or five points, you can make it really bold, or you can go for somewhere in between. I think three points in our design will be quite good. Now you can see that the icons are a lot thinner, so we can scale them up nicely and make sure that they match. So this way the icons are not too small at the edges and we can kind of connect them nicely so they're still visible on the design. Same with this one, we can increase it in size so it becomes more visible and more clear what we're doing. If for any reason you want to end the icon or put the icons closer to the word and you see that the connection isn't exactly as you want it, you select the shape that you've created, go to shape format, edit shape and edit points. And here you can see all the points that you have made. Now, if we zoom in, hold control, zoom in or use this toggle here, you can either drag the points and make sure that they match or let's go to edit points again. You can add an additional point in between. You can right click add point and then right click on the other one and delete point if you want. So there's multiple ways that you could do this. Let's do the same for the other side. So shape format, edit points. Let's add a point here. I like to add points and delete points because if you try to drag it, PowerPoint is not the easiest tool to, to kind of connect them. So it's not really a design program. So that's why I try to work in the lines or with the lines that I have available and put it right here. So this way, the outline of the icons is quite consistent with the outline of the word. Now, the thing is, if we select everything and group it together, it will act as one group. So that's nice. We can move it. But if we now want to scale this, we can see that the width of the icons isn't expanding in or isn't changing uh, the same as the energy or the outline width. So you can still change that by ungrouping it again and every time going back and forth and reducing the size so it kind of matches again. Or there's an alternative that you could do if you are happy with the final result. And that is to select everything. Let's duplicate for now so we don't, we can always go back if we want. Select everything, Control X or cut and then paste or Control V. 
and paste as a picture and that will look a lot nicer. Now there's a few more nice things that we could do on this slide. So let's go to the insert tab and do some layout on the slide. Go to icons and let's look for a nice background image. Let's say windmills because we're looking for that green energy vibe. And this one I think will look quite good. So let's insert it on the slide. Right click, crop, adjust the crop marks so that it fills the entire slide and then extend the image like this. We're going to send it to the back and now let's add a rectangle on top. Let's leave some room on the side because we still want to make that picture black and white. So go to picture corrections and make it black and white. Picture color that is and black and white. The top rectangle, we want to give it a solid fill color, dark gray and no outline. And now we can expand it entirely. And let's give this some transparency, maybe about 15%. Right click, send backwards. So that is in between the image and the text or the icon that we have created. And depending on the visibility, you can of course change the amount of transparency. You can reduce it or increase the transparency depending on the design that you want to create. For now, I'm going to keep it like this. And this part here with the windmills is bothering me just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the crop mark so that the windmills are placed a little bit lower and that gives some more breathing room to the design. Now those first two slides we don't need anymore. So let's work with this and let's create a nice design. Let's adjust it just a bit higher and we're going to place a text box underneath. Put some dummy text in. I'm using the font Avenir Next, which goes well with the bold font that we've used. Center it in the middle and I'm going to reduce the size to about, to about 14. Let's reduce the transparency of the background a little bit. There we go, to about seven points. That will be good. Let's duplicate the slide. And on the first slide, I'm going to select the image and the text. And I'm going to drag it outside of the screen, give some extra spacing to the title and subtitle, and then apply the morph transition. And that way we can see that the title and the content flies in nicely. Now there's multiple ways that you could use this element here. Let's say, for example, you want to do this as a logo. You can also put it to the side or at the bottom of your slide, and that will look quite cool as well. Let's make a regular title for this one. Give it a bold font, just a regular Avenir Next. Let's make the title a bit shorter, just lower Mipsum, and increase it to all caps. There we go. That also looks quite good. And then we have a logo at the bottom, which we could use for our presentation. It's like a consistent style element that we could use. And also for this one, we can animate it with the morph transition. Let's drag those downwards, give some extra spacing and the logo and that can fly in at the end. So if we now also add the morph transition and now let's preview at the entire result that we've created. So here we can see a nice opening slide. And as soon as we click, we have our own created logo on the slide with some dummy text, but it also works on a regular slide if you add some content and you have the small logo in the corner. So there's multiple ways that you could use it. You could really create custom logos in PowerPoint. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint, please watch the video on the screen right now.